name is Rick Pasek, Fly Fish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Uh, today we'll be tying something um, a little out of the ordinary for what I've been putting up on the channel. Um, uh, it's something I've been tying for many, many years. I love tying these. Um, and that is a space style fly. So we're going to be tying pretty well this exact pattern right here um, today. But uh, I, I tie these in many different uh, styles. So I'm actually going to change this over so you guys can see. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I'll be tying today. Um, but I tie these in all kinds of different styles and color patterns and stuff. So there's one in red with silver body and and uh, what's that green one? This one here as well. And you see this one here. If, if you open that up, it's got some hackle in behind there to help it uh, help it stay flared. Um, I tie them in with a little bit of a little bit of uh, mallard flank or teal flank, depending as well. Um, this has got uh, Coq de Leon um, fibers, and then a little bit of teal flank. Um, same with this. This is pretty well all Coq de Leon, right? So, um, and then I also tie a little bit different, like ones like these, right? And I. You just vary the color pattern so but today i'm going to be tying this basically what this is is this is my spay take on a squamish poacher and the squamish poacher is a uh, is a um, uh, shrimp pattern and that's what it looks like is a shrimp um, but uh, this is my spay take on it so um, let's get at her this one takes a little bit longer so um, let's get going <clears throat> so in the vise i have a uh, partridge uh, Bartlett uh, Bartley tr traditional salmon fly hook in a size one. Okay, now I also use the this one here, the whoops, sorry, the TMCO 7999. Right, I always also use that. Actually, that's what this orange, the orange one that I showed you. This one is actually tied on the TMCO. This one's a little larger. This is in a size one. Um, so I'll be using that, and then for the body, I'll be using some hollow tinsel, and I will be using some um, gold, uh, sorry, some um, uh, rib, some gold rib wire as well, and then I will be using some, where are we, um, for the, uh, for this, uh, for the, there's two different hackles up at the front. So for the front hackle, the one right after the uh, the bulb that keeps it out, I'll be using some ring neck spay. Then I'll be using some strung hackle as well. And I will be using some orange rabbit. I'm just going to, I'm taking it, actually taking it off of the, uh, the leather and I'll be putting that into a dubbing loop. Um, I've already got it all prepared in my, in my, tool um actually this is not even a a tool that you can get from the fly stores this is actually from the dollar store it's just a uh, metal fridge clip and they work really really well so alrighty so let's uh let's get tying <clears throat> i'll try not to talk too too much through this one so i can get this done a little quicker because these flies do usually take me a little bit longer just because of the amount of steps there are but <clears throat> we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So I'm going to take a piece of the gold wire that I forgot to cut off. So I'll cut a new piece. There we go. And I'm going to just tie it in. You can see these hooks have that uh, the step there. Right? I'm going to tie it right up to that step. So I'm going to put that wire in. Keep it up on top, on the side, whatever. Just keep it consistent wherever you want to put it. I'm going to go all the way back to the tip of the hook. Okay. Then I'm just going to tie in my hollow tinsel. I like it in the gold for for the orange. I like it in the gold. Um, I like it in the silver. I like it in the red. It just all depends on what I'm tying. But for this one, I like it in the gold. So I'm going to stop about there. I'm going to give myself some some room up front because I've got three different hackles going in up front there and I might even change things up and put something a little different in the front I've got some uh, some mallard in uh, 
in yellow that I might put in um, on this one. We'll see. We'll see how it looks at the end here as we go. So the one thing I really, really like about spay flies is it just you can change things up so much by the littlest thing that you do, right? So you can add all kinds of colors and 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 um, <clears throat> materials that'll help hold things out. And it's just yeah, I really like cutting spay flies. They're fun. So I'm just gonna cut that off. Now I'm gonna just counter rib my gold wire. Now you could use a different one to, to make it stand out if you want to use like a red wire or a, even a black one, something like that to make it stand out a bit more. I'm using it to stand out, but I'm also using it more to uh, to um, just hold in that hollow, right? So three, four, five wraps in front and behind, sorry. Three, four, five wraps in front. Helicopter. Secure just to make sure. Okay. <clears throat> so now, this is the fun part. This one sometimes takes me a little bit just because of my my vision. So I'm going to counter spin my nano silk. I'm using uh, Zemperfly nano silk in a 12 watt. So I'm just going to counter spin it here just to get the get the material flat again. Then I'm going to take my I'm going to get this other light in here. Hopefully that doesn't mess up too much here. But just for this point at least, I'm going to I got to get in here and I'm going to try to split the thread. Now, from like I said, for me, because of my vision, this can be a bugger sometimes, even though this nano silk is actually really easy to, to do this to, um, because of my vision, blind in one eye. This can be tough. And if I don't get it in a few seconds here, I will just do a doubling loop. I had it and I let it go. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna open that up. I'm gonna take my rabbit. Get it on there. Open that up. Ah. That didn't work. Uh, actually, it might be enough. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. That might be enough. And if it's not, I can always do it again. So now I'm just spinning it and holding, and then I'll let go and let that twist get to the uh, the rabbit there. Give it another good couple of twists. Let that go. So there, now I'm just going to take my dubbing brush and just make sure it's pulled out a bit. I want that nice and fluffy. Yeah, that actually might be enough because I don't want a ton here. So now I'm just going to wrap it, fold it back, fold it back, fold it back. Oh yeah, that's going to be perfect actually. There. So I just want that little ball there. Okay. And I'll take my brush. I'm just going to give that a brush out just to make sure nothing's trapped. All good. Now I'm going to take my um, saddle hackle here. And I'm just going to tie this in by the butt. Okay. Tie that in by the butt section. Fold that over. Make sure it's nicely tied in. Get rid of my my stem. I'm gonna grab my uh, stone foe hackle pliers here. Just grab them by the, grab this feather by the tip, and I'm going to make sure I stroke all of this material back as I go around. I want four or five turns here. 
this is just going to help again keep this material the next material sp splayed out a bit um, sometimes I'll use different materials here like uh, uh, quite often instead of doing um, rabbit there uh, the, that ball I'll do a, a foxtail Maybe one more here um, and that'll help because uh, it's stiffer the material is stiffer so it'll help uh, help keep that that next the next one that we're putting in splayed out so there we go I got already got rid of my my center there so now I can just make sure that's spread out nicely again I can take my brush or you can take your bodkin just make sure there's no none of those fibers trapped and I did trap a few of them so there we go okay so again let's pull that back a bit now I am going to take my um, ring neck spay here okay so that's now try to get decent feathers here you can see this one's a bit broken up in here you can see that it's 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 a bit broken it's not the greatest feather but uh, for demonstrating here it will definitely do so again tie that down fold that stem back tie over top of that stem move forward cut that stem piece off Okay, now I'm going to separate this so I can get to the tip. Because again, I want to get my hackle pliers on that tip, right? So right there. I'm going to get my hackle pliers and put that right on. Now a lot of times I'll just do this with my hand, but it's easier with a hackle plier to show you guys. So, so I'll just stroke all this material back and carefully wrap trying not to trap any of them if you do again not a huge deal you can get them later you can pull them out but so one wrap in front of the other and I'll probably get yeah I'll get one more out of this and then I will tie that off there we go with that make sure that's tied in T fold that back and tie it and now we'll just find that tip just right there just pull that off if I didn't get that there you go so just fold all these back over top of it again just brush that out <clears throat> okay so now I am going to put a one of these here mallard flank in yellow I think the yellow will make it stand out nicely um, I've tied them like this before and, and they've worked well um, but uh, I don't always tie them with the yellow but it's always good to have a couple of different uh, versions in your in your box now i could have actually probably now that i'm looking at it because i've got only this feather and this feather to go i probably could have made my body just a little bit longer i'm going to be left with a bit of a big head but that's totally fine so again <clears throat> gonna grab my stem with my hackle plier stroke all my materials back stroke it back around stroke it back now these can have a tendency as they're a little oilier they can have a tendency of getting stuck like right there this few of them just got stuck underneath um, and it's, it's just the way they are so you'll have to kind of play with these a little bit more than you have to than with other materials but let's make sure it's stroked back <clears throat> next and then I might get one more here I think yeah I'll get one more actually it might be it might actually work out okay with the head we'll see ok 
a few times in front, a few times in behind. Get rid of that stem. Let's see how this looks. I'm not exactly too thrilled on how this one laid down, but we'll see in a second here. Let's say comb this stuff out. Oh, it's not too bad actually. This uh, mallard and teal flank, I find it always looks worse when you first tie it until you brush it out. Get a little bit of a stem there when I cover up. Still a bit of a stem. Let's see if I can cut that off. There we go. Again, that's just for looks more than anything, but. Alrighty. There we go. Looking nice and bushy. So now I'm just going to add just a little bit of a piece of the guinea here. T same way, tie this one. This one I'm tying in by the tips though, as well as like the last one. And then I'm going to. Wrap. I want four or five wraps of this. Let's see how it, see how this lays. Like again, that that teal flank can sometimes, uh, or that mallard, can sometimes lay down differently. So, might not splay out as much as I'd like, but we'll see. I'm just gonna pull a few of these off. It's a little bit too much. Mm-hmm. We'll see how that works out once I'm finished here. <clears throat> they don't all turn out perfect. They don't all need to turn out perfect, right? Um, as long as you've got the elements and the in and more than anything the movement, right? You want that movement in the flies, and that's what you'll get a lot of with these materials. Is lots of movement. Lots of pulsation, like it'll pulse nicely. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna brush this all backwards here, just to loosen any fibers that I got. And then I'll just lay these back nicely. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a whip finish right here. fibers like this that are sticking out down here you can either try to fold them back or if they don't want to cooperate just pop them out you don't need all of them so all right again I just take my my brush just separate some of these fibers right all righty now just a touch of uh head cement or whatever you like using, UV, Sally Hansen's. Today I'll just be using a little bit of Sally Hansen's. And that is the fly. <clears throat> Again, you tie it in, in many different patterns, uh, like different color schemes, right? You can do it, uh, you know, I'll just pop this one actually into the, into the vise for you, right? Right, so there's a, a red one that uh, has worked really well. Um, this green one actually I've done okay, depending on the river system, but I've actually, on the Vetter River down in the, the lower mainland, I've actually caught quite a few bull trout with this one. So, using it as a spay fly. So yeah, so just experiment with those and, and have some fun. They're they're like I said, they're a very fun pattern to tie. I love tying uh, spay flies. They're they can uh, they can definitely get your 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 um, creative juices flowing because you can really you can really play with them, right? So and once these get wet, these will pulsate nicely, right? And that 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 rabbit or fox or whatever you like using in back here, I'm even putting in a a nice dubbing ball 
Well, it works as well. I think that's what I've done with uh, several of these were, were dubbing balls, excuse me again. Um, yeah, this one here is an example of the green here. That's a dubbing ball in the back with, uh, and then some hackle, right? So, um, yeah, just, just play around. Use what you think you, you need to. Um, like I said, you want something not too soft in the back here to help flare that out, right? You want that to flare out. So as this is getting going through the water and getting stripped back and stuff, it'll 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 pulsate really nicely. It'll just do that real nice pulsation, right? So alrighty. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, let me know uh, what you want me to tie next. Uh, just leave some comments if you want me to tie some salmon flies or some steelhead flies or more trout flies. Just let me know. All right. So uh, if you like that video, give that a big thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing to the page and smash that notification bell and we'll see you in the next time video. Have a good one. Tight lines, everyone.